Welcome to our Back to Basics training on playground safety. In order to ensure an enjoyable outdoor experience, basic playground safety must be utilized by all staff. My name is Sharon Haynes and I will walk you through a common sense approach to this topic. This playground safety training will not discuss the playground requirements and standards enforced by playground safety regulatory agencies, nor will it outline the licensure requirements in your area. This training is designed to provide important daily safety checks that must be implemented in order to provide an enjoyable and safe outdoor experience for children under the ages of five years old. The information is provided for education staff but it's important to remember that the safety of children in our care is everyone's responsibility. Outdoor playtime should be a daily opportunity for students to explore their environment without risk to their health or safety. There are some simple steps you can take to provide a quality gross motor experience for children. Let's begin in the classroom. At the beginning of the school year, the education staff should help the children develop playground safety rules. Involving the students in this process creates a sense of ownership of the process and the rules of their environment. Children are more apt to retain the rules if they helped with their development. For preschool children, the playground rule chart should not be any longer than three rules. These rules should be reviewed before going outside each day. Playground safety begins with the children. During your classroom orientation, please explain to the parents that the children will be going out every day, twice a day. Research states that children learn best through play. Keeping with this premise, children should be encouraged to play. Parents should understand that their children will be actively engaged in gross motor activities. Therefore, they should be dressed for active play and expect that their children may get dirty while playing. Proper clothing is a must. No open-toed shoes. Sneakers are the best. Before leaving the classroom, teaching staff must check the children's shoes to ensure that the laces are tied. No jewelry. Necklaces, rings, and earrings can get caught in the equipment and cause injury to children. No jackets with hoods or long strings. The hoods can limit a child's ability to see their surroundings. Long strings on clothing can get caught in the equipment and can cause injury to children. Daily playground safety checks must take place before any classes begin play. Each center should identify a safety person who will conduct safety sweeps of the playground and the facility each morning. The playground sweep should include such areas as the fence line, checking for trash and debris, evaluating the surface covering, checking the equipment for overall condition, looking for stray animals and insect nests. When evaluating the fence line, answer the following questions. Is the fence in good condition? Are the gates closed and locked? Are there any branches protruding through the fence? When addressing trash and debris, ask yourself, Is there any trash on the playground that needs to be removed? Have the garbage cans been emptied? Any branches, leaves, or pine needles that need to be picked up or blown off the playground. These issues should be immediately addressed before allowing any children access to the playground. To avoid tripping hazards and compound injuries, monitor the surface of the playground. Are there any holes in the poured surface? Does the mulch need to be raked under fall zones? Do you need additional mulch to cover the playground? 
Let's talk in more detail about the fall zones. Mulch is easily kicked out of place by active children. It is everyone's job to ensure that the mulch is raked back into place after each play period. So, when the children are resting and getting drinks, a staff person can rake the mulch back into place before exiting the play area. Alternatively, consider recruiting classroom volunteers to help with this task. Poured surfaces can be slippery with debris. It's best to avoid the slip factor by blowing the debris off before allowing children access to the playground. When preparing the playground for play, evaluate the equipment. Has the equipment been wiped off? Is the equipment in good shape? Do you see any rust on the equipment or around the bolts and nuts? Equipment that has been damaged overnight or in general, may be a safety issue, must be reported to the person in charge at your center. It is a must to wipe off the morning dew from the play equipment, steps, and ladder to avoid slipping. It's also extremely important to check the equipment and the surrounding area for animals that may have moved in overnight, like raccoons or stray cats. Also look for ant beds and bee, wasp, or hornet's nests that suddenly appear. Favorite spots are under the climbing structures or inside playhouses. Last but certainly not least is supervision. Staff must be actively engaged with the children. Staff should spread out across the playground area. They should also be strategically placed near the slide and or climbing structure. Constant sweeps of the playground area must be conducted. Here are some additional suggestions to help ensure an enjoyable outdoor experience. Staff should ensure that all gross motor equipment and gross motor activity are developmentally age appropriate. Duplicate toys keep disagreements to a minimum. Specific to our program, teachers are required to provide a teacher-guided gross motor activity for at least five minutes. This aids the teacher in assessing the children's gross motor skills. Tricycles should be in good working condition. Children must wear a proper fitting helmet when riding their tricycle. Our program also requires that all children wear a hair bonnet underneath the helmet. Lastly, equipment should be felt in order to ensure that it's not too hot for children to sit on or climb on. This is essential for the southern climate. Preparing for outdoor play is equally as important. The teaching staff must ensure that the first aid kits are fully stocked and available during outdoor playtime. Our program requires that staff wear the first aid kits in the form of fanny packs. If you have a child who has an allergy that requires an EpiPen, the EpiPen must be taken outside during your outdoor playtime and stored in the first aid kit. Just a side note for the staff in our program. EpiPens should not be stored in a locked medication box, but stored in the classroom in a secured cabinet out of the children's reach. The reason is that a child who requires an EpiPen only has seconds before they are struggling to breathe. The EpiPen must be available at all times and within reach to help this child survive a life-threatening situation. Our program also requires that staff have access to the gate keys at all times while on the playground in case of an emergency. Regulatory agencies require child care programs to provide unlimited access to drinking water for children and staff while on the playground. Water must also be available for hand washing. Children who want to play in sand and water 
must wash their hands before and after playing in each area. Credits Images by Google Images Play. It's the way young children learn. Welcome to Child Action Incorporated. PowerPoint template by Presentation Magazine. Video by Sharon A. Haynes. When we think about outdoor play, feelings such as excitement, enthusiasm, enjoyment, and pleasure come to mind. However, the very first thought that comes to mind should be one of safety. Please remember that it is everyone's responsibility for the safety of our most precious resource, our children. Thank you for your participation in today's training on playground safety. Back to the basics.